Hey everyone, welcome to Witcode, where in this video we're going to learn about the JavaScript promise.all method, including when to use it. So, the promise.all method is a static method of the promise class that executes multiple asynchronous tasks concurrently. However, it should be noted that as JavaScript is single-threaded, only one task will be executing at a time. Nevertheless, control can shift between asynchronous tasks, which makes the execution of the tasks provided to promise.all seem concurrent. But so, the JavaScript promise.all method takes an iterable of promises as input, such as an array of promises, and returns a single promise when all of the promises in the iterable are fulfilled. For a demonstration, let's create multiple promises. Each of these promises will be fulfilled after two seconds. So, after two seconds, each of these promises will be fulfilled and the values promise1, promise2, and promise3 will be passed to these resolve functions respectively. Now, let's pass each one of these promises to the promise.all method and attach a then to it. So after two seconds have passed, all of the promises passed to promise.all have resolved. And as a result, the promise return from promise.all is resolved. When the promise.all method is resolved, its value consists of an array of the fulfillment values from the promises provided to it. Which here we can see is promise1, which is passed to resolve, listed here, promise2, and then promise3, listed next all contained within values here. And now let's talk about the order of fulfillment. So the fulfillment values are listed in the order that they were passed in the iterable, not the completion order. For example, if we change promise one to resolve after five seconds as opposed to two, it will resolve before promise two and promise three. However, it was passed to promise to all first, so it will still be listed first. So notice how now it took five seconds for promise one to resolve. So when this resolved after five seconds, the promise returned from here. They were listed in the same order because they were there. The values are listed in here in the order of which they were passed, which is promise one, promise two, and then promise three like this. And now let's talk about promise dot all and rejection. So the promise returned from promise dot all is fulfilled when the inputs promises have all fulfilled. However, if any of the promises provided are rejected, promise to all fails instantly and returns the reason for the failure. This is known as fast as fail fast behavior. If one of the promises rejects, promise to all rejects immediately. For a demonstration, let's reject promise two after two seconds. Also, we'll have to add a catch block to promise to all chain to log out this error. So promise one and promise three were still resolved, but promise two was now rejected. As such, the promise returned from promise.all is rejected as it is rejected when any of the input's promises are rejected. Also, promise.all was rejected as soon as promise two failed. So we saw after two seconds, this was listed or printed to the console immediately. And now let's talk about rejection order. So when it comes to order and promise.all rejection, the promise returned from promise.all is rejected with the first rejection reason. For example, let's make promise one reject after five seconds and keep promise two at two seconds. The error message provided in the catch block will still be from promise two, and this is because of its fail fast behavior. So right there, after two seconds, Promise 2 was rejected, which was the first promise to fail. 
which causes promise.all to fail, and we log the first rejection reason, which is promise2 was rejected. And if we changed, now if we changed promise1 to reject after one second, then the error message would be promise1 was rejected. And now let's talk about the use case for promise.all. So the promise.all method is typically used for working with multiple related asynchronous tasks that all need to be fulfilled before continuing code execution. For example, say we need to get data from, mul from multiple APIs and then combine that data. Promise.all would be a great solution. So here, we make calls to dash witcode and dash greg by calling these functions here within promise.all concurrently. In other words, we can make calls to these two APIs concurrently with promise.all method, which would increase efficiency. Then we would just do some array destructuring from this values. We know that the first value returned is the order, or the way the values return in promise.all is by order they're supplied. So we would get this number first, and this one, which we can destructure here. And another good use of promise.all is with over-awaiting code in an asynchronous function. So for example, it wouldn't be uncommon to write this here in an async function using two await calls. However, we can see from this that the call to Greg from this function here will not be made until this API call here has completed because we are awaiting here and then when this is done, we move on to the next line here. However, these two calls do not rely on one another, so writing in this way would be inefficient. We can make this more efficient with promise.all like so. Here, the call to this API, or dash greg, will be made concurrently with the call to dash witcode, which is more efficient. Promise.all is also a good idea here because the final result relies on both promises. So this sum relies on the promise from get greg's favorite number and get witcode's favorite number. So in other words, the sum of the favorite numbers relies on the result from both calls to dash witcode and dash greg. So if either fails, the promise is rejected instantly, and then error handling is, revoked, is invoked. But so this is my video on promise.all. It's a very handy method to use. It can increase efficiency in your code. Um, so besides that, I want to thank you for liking and subscribing today, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.